Hello, hello. I know you. I know you probably uh, can't see me too good. Uh, my digital camera is not really working right now. I don't know why. But it is what it is. See this circuit board right here? Your average American would think that this circuit board right here is trash. Your average American would take this circuit board, throw it away, and go buy something new. But as you know, we're not like that here. The reason why I don't make a good American is because I think. I use my mind. And you, my friend, can do the same. I don't want to be the average American. <laughs> anyway, I'm going off topic here. I'm going to show you how to sweat these uh, microchips off of a circuit board. All you need is a soldering iron. Really, you don't even need one. But uh, I don't exactly have a soldering iron. I have a soldering gun, which will work. I think this is for bigger stuff, but hell, whatever gets the job done. The only reason why I don't have this plugged in is because I was letting it cool down. It got really hot earlier. Anyway, I'm going to try and get this capacitor out right here. You want to flip the board over. I don't know if you can see or not. I want you to see this. i got to give it a minute to warm up. You'll know when it's ready because the tip turns red. <laughs> Alright, there's some smoke coming off the tip. We're good. Come on, buddy. Melt the solder. See, back in the day, they used uh, lead solder. And I could be wrong about this, I don't know. But I think that the lead solder takes longer to melt than the stuff they use now. I don't know what they use now. But uh, I think the lead solder is the best. After you push the lead through, you want to make sure that you, that you scrape the solder awake so when it, uh, you know, the solder hardens in less than a second, so, you know, if you scrape the solder away, it makes it easier to pull out of the board. All you really want to do is heat up the, uh, the lead here and then push it push it through the board. All right. Now all you do is 
pull your chip in, and there you go. That is one more microchip now to the collection. That is a 25 volt capacitor. And uh, as you see, there's a bunch of chips here. You can use these chips for anything. There's uh, two transistors, a couple resistors, that's a capacitor. And all this is out of a junk circuit board that doesn't even work. Even though the circuit board doesn't work, the chips are still good. Believe it or not, these little chips, unless you give them too much power, these things usually never burn out. It's not like a cell phone where it'll last a year and then it burns out. These things right here last forever, man. They can get wet. You know, they can go in the snow. As long as you don't turn them on while they're wet, they'll last, believe it or not. <laughs> That's why you like the old boom boxes and stuff. You can leave them outside. And as long as you let them dry out and you plug them back in, them things will work. Because the old microchips, they're, they're, they're just better. You know, basic circuitry, basic microchips are better than all this high-tech, sophisticated shit that they make nowadays. You know, I, I say forget the corporations, forget their, their, uh, their inventions, forget, forget all that stuff. Build your own stuff, man. Build it out of trash, out of junk. Make something out of nothing. You will feel better at the end of the day if you build something and make something of your own than you would ever feel just going to the store and buying something new. But don't take my word for it. Do it yourself. See for yourself, guys.